DK Diamantes. His name is Bricky and Warhammer 40k, everyone. But before we do, if you enjoy today's episode and you want to support the podcast, head over to patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous, where you can get access to our Discord, bloopers if they happen. Uh, at the $15 tier, you get all the HD posters you can shake a stick at, which, by the way, Bricky, we have a new poster. And oh, no. No, 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 no. This one is so... Oh, my, it's really good. It's re- show it to him, shy because this. All right, thing I'm is I'm ready. Like, All right, I don't think I'm over. It's so good. Is it peak? Is it peak? Oh yeah, I, 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 I'm, it's so peak. I feel like I'm being gaslit. Never mind, that's in peak. Right? It's that's so peak, good. bro. It's that's so, so good. Good. It is a it is a sister of battle that has been converted to corn. Not that, that I don't even care very about this or ever. It's so good. I don't even care about this heresy. Right? It's I'm, so I'm not even good. upset about this heresy. This this is actually really really good. This 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 gal got hips wider than a five lane freeway. Yeah, I'm, this is I'm like impressed. One of the, this is one of the few posters where I was like, yo, I don't care what the hips look like. I don't care that, like, she's got the boba. It's just, it's, it's amazing. And I gotta be honest, she reminds me a little bit of Marasov with the hair and the face. I kind of see it. And the glowing eyes. Yeah, that's the other thing. Uh, Shy showed me this uh, yesterday or the day before, and she was like, uh, yeah, did you know that Hallis Day, before they sent the poster, was like, yeah, I have no confidence in this, I think this is my worst thing ever, and this poster just sucks, and Shia was like, well, you know, let me see it, and she gets sent that! I, I gotta I gotta be honest, imposter syndrome's a hell of a thing, because this is one of my favorites. I would, that's what I said, I was like, this is one of my favorite posters, it's amazing, and this thing is gonna sell out like that, when you make it, it's gonna sell out so quick. God damn. Ooh, yeah. Well, well, okay. Well, I don't know if it'll sell out that quick. But well, I don't know. I love it. I think it's like one I of the best think it's ones incredible, we've gotten, dude. You know what? We're filming this on Monday, but god damn it, I'm gonna get this on the shop the day this thing comes out, so that we can actually get it sold day of watching. So if you're Hell out yeah. there. Watching this video right now, go to the shop at orchidate.com in the description and snag yourself a new Sister of Wrath poster. Um, damn. All right. Let's go. Hell yeah. In fact, actually, this month of June, we are actually going to be having a ton of new merch. Actually, considering that's week by week, we might actually it might actually spill into July a little bit, but uh uh, we are going to have a bunch of new merch coming out this month. In, f- in fact, we already have a new one. Um, it kind of like there's a new shirt on the site and hoodie right now that is just a, a little little celebration of, of Pride Month. It's a super simple, only the front uh, design of our Adirix shirt. But we got this cool like rainbow vinyl thing. So it's a Ooh. nice little thing there. Uh, we were donating um, uh, uh, for every single Shirt sold five bucks go to uh, to various LGBT charities, and uh, for every hoodie, it's ten bucks. Oh, so hell yeah. Um, yeah, so so we got one of those in the in the stop as well. Uh, nothing on the back, but the rainbows on the front specifically. So it's a lot yeah. more. I know some people don't they don't like the back design because they feel like it's too big. So this one's a little bit more like nice and just the front. So oh, yeah, um, I love the back design. I would prefer like a gigantic cool back design instead of like so, you know. So most people don't like it sometimes because they don't they go out in public and they don't like the giant thing on their back. Um, mm-hmm. But you don't go out in public, so it makes sense. Fair, fair and valid. <laughs> anyway, that's all happening right there. <laughs> uh, also, Storm of Iron is the book club. Um, so read it, oh, Iron yeah. Warriors, Lay Lola Mao. So, hmm. so let's see. Today is a day. special day. <gasps> Today, we have the brand new edition of Warhammer 40k out. No, not right. It generally comes out this weekend, but um, mm. out sort of kind of for good old 40k. 40k. And 40k. 40k. And this, uh, this one in particular is a lovely, lovely bit of Leviathan. Leviathan is here. And ready to begin. 
Let's go. So this is this is Ultramarines and Tyranids story, right? It is not just Ultramarines and Tyranids. It is basically everyone. It is a oh. lot going on right here. So so here's we'll start it off. The new edition has come out. The Arcs of Omen story has, for the most part, either ended or been relegated to a particular segment. Yeah. Um, the uh, Vashtor got what his got his key. He is now looking for the lock, and the lion is pursuing him. Mm-hmm. However, in the other side of the galaxy, towards the Segmentum Solar, uh, it's actually probably the same side of the galaxy, but whatever. Uh, it starts off with bugs. Uh, bugs. Uh, I'm assuming but it's the Leviathan Hive Fleet. You you are correct. It is Let's Leviathan. Let's go. I'm learning. Let's He's go. learning. I'm learning. Um. Now, much like most invasions of Tyranids, it starts off with nothing. Slowly and slowly, certain areas of the Segmentum Solar go dark. Uh Uh-oh. One by one by one, one, it is in total silence. Astropathic signals from one world just stop arriving. And then the next... So, and then so they, the next. They've got to know that that's probably like a Tyranid thing, right? Because Tyranids just cover up and eat everything. Like they, they like cover up uh, psychic signals and everything, right? Because they're like a dark cloud in the warp or something. The shadow in the warp. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, so the Imperium has got to have some inkling that like, uh-oh, there's probably bugs over there. If no signals are coming out, or I guess also everybody's dead. Well, what is, uh, you know, sometimes they say driving tired is almost as bad as driving drunk. Re- poor driving, reckless driving because you're tired. Yes, um, there you but, go. but the specific quote is, for the myriad adepts toiling in vast scriptorum halls of neighboring subsectors, no news from outlying planetary systems meant only that their mountainous and monotonous workloads became fractionally less. Amidst the endlessly clattering keys, the scratch of quills, and the thump of auto stampers, there was neither time nor desire for rumination on cause and effect. Why would you? Oh, no. My 20-hour back-breaking work days have been reduced to 19 hours. Yippee! Yippee! But a planet's gone dark, so, you know. Just but, uh, stop checking in. The workload is less. You know? Hey, we're not concerned about one of our millions of planets going dark. I get to go home early. So wow. before, as the, before this, however, there was a nice little story of an Adeptus Arbides, uh, which is the, the Judge Dread people, uh, a judge named Hermann Kratz, uh, who stood in on his cruiser, and after... Uh, Leaving, he, so he had like he had kind of cool. He had like a purity seal with like twenty three worlds on it that he specifically brought to justice as a judge. It's kind of a cool. Oh, so he's not like dead, not like dead, but like you know helped out. It's just one purity seal, but it has them all written out. It's pretty cool. Oh, oh wow! Um, so he's got like a he's got like a ponytail that's just a purity seal, huh? It's just this long twenty three list foomp, scroll. Yep, pretty cool <laughs> on his okay. judge dread outfit. <laughs> yeah. Um. So. As uh, yeah, I, I got to be honest, like the they're obviously just Judge Dead ripoffs, but they've gotten a, just a little bit more um, oh, visuals so to make cool. them properly Imperium that I think I'm actually really liking the Arbides now. Yeah, the 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 one that Shy just posted, it looks like it is very obviously inspired by Judge Dread, but it feels like it's also enough of a little variation with like the 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 little gold pauldron is great. I love that. Yeah. Like, pop of, that pop of gold on an all black suit is just really cool. Yeah, with the red line. It's really sick. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it's very cool. um, they are they then leave warp translation. And as soon as they end warp translation, the navigator just starts screeching into the speakers <laughs> oh, across no. the entire ship. The inhuman howl of pain and psychic talents just ripped across the entire planet. Or not the plant, sorry, the entire ship and the bridge crew. Yeah. So they open the warp shutters. And oh. after <laughs> opening the warp shutters, they look out into the vast nothingness. 
And then they realize that the black between stars is in fact not space, but bug. It's Tyranids. It's so many Tyranids, it looks like darkness. Oh, the, gross. The world map on the center hololith uh, was had so many signatures that it turned into a gigantic, vibrant green ball so bright it hurt his eyes to look at. Oh, man. That's like blips so on a sonar. <laughs> That's so many bugs. Oh, and this is just how, how many ships are in this fleet? Is it just the one? It's a, it's like a three. It's nothing too big. Oh, no, they're dead. They're so, so dead. They're going to get eaten alive. This is no contest, is it? So one of the bridge crew with blood coming out of his nose, like <laughs> was started just to, to whimper and be like, there's so there's so many. There's so many as he turned to run away. And then one of the judges shot him with a shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> because of course they do. Of course, um, he's, he's trying to desert. But uh, immediately, what happens afterwards is he tried to grab the various astropaths on the fleet, and against all possible emperor's will, send out a signal. Uh, e- even with the shadow and the warp going on, any kind of signal. Yeah, just any little blip from that dead space would at least be an indication to someone that hey, we're here. Someone's here. Please send help. Right. That's funny. That's funny, Shy. He tried to desert. He became dessert. Well, they didn't eat him. They didn't eat him with a spoon and whipped uh, cream. Well, well, uh, tyr- uh, well, I guess the tyranny is Continuing. You're right. You're right continuing <laughs> the story. Ooh. Eventually, um, yeah, he does become dessert. Okay, sorry. So uh, the ship, the aid report that the astropathic sanctum might have gone a message through as the astropath had reported to have ruptured every single blood vessel in his body <laughs> in the attempt. <laughs> wow. And uh, after that, the, basically uh, the two other ships got um, one got tangled in gigantic nid tendrils and ripped apart. And the other ship got uh, covered in gigantic boils, uh, which were actually nid boarding craft as the oh. nids started to <laughs> enter the walls of their ship. <laughs> That's so and, gross, but so cool that they just launch boils that just infect metal ships and have boarding bugs on them. And uh, through the the sobbing bridge crew, uh, they activate their martyrdom protocol to blow the ship up as a enormous Tyranid vessel uh, slowly flies towards them, mouth agape, pitch darkness full of tentacles and teeth. As their oh, ship yeah. flies right on through. Yeah. What are those ships called? Because uh, I saw them in, was it a uh, Dawn of War trailer that showed like all the different faction ships and then it ended on like the Necrons. And yeah, like the Nids have these big like ships with these gaping like Leviathan maws and it's just. It's um Battlefleet Gothic, I think is what you're thinking of. Oh, oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think they're just called bio ships. Oh, okay. They don't have, like, but, a super spiffy name or anything. They're just living ships that nom, 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 nom. Pretty much. Hmm. Um, but a- anyway, as the worlds go dark, <laughs> it goes one upon another upon another. Sometimes it's quite humorous. A, a world is defending themselves against an orc wah, and then randomly the orcs just don't show up anymore, as if they ran completely out of reinforcements. Oh. And then cheers and, and and parties are thrown immediately afterwards as then the bugs arrive, realizing they ate the rest of the orcs. Yeah, the orcs stopped arriving because the nids ate them en route to the humans, and the humans are celebrating, hooray, and then... The uh, Chaos Space Marines randomly just turned tail and stopped uh, stopped their demonic rituals. Even, um, even Votan currently sieging an imperial world for food and resources and ore because of course uh pack their stuff up and get the hell out of dodge because and then immediately excited defenders woohoo yay yeah oh my god <laughs> oh my god i i don't know why i found it so strange that chaos turned tail and ran just to, I guess I always figured that chaos are just like completely like psychopaths and they don't really have like higher brain functions and they're just barbarians, which isn't the case. 
So no, yeah, I, I Tyrion's are when, surprisingly intelligent. Yeah, I always find it weird when like Chaos turns tail from the Niz. I, I would almost think that Chaos would want to at least like stand their ground and like die to the last. Uh, I like the well, K- Chaos would do anything they possibly could to murder uh, the Imperium. Yeah, Nids is like, eh, this is nothing. Let's just. There's no sport in that. Yeah. Um. Anyway, there. There's all these lovely little excerpts. I, I think GW has really found the right blend of Nid lore which is very much just telling it from the perspective of those dying. I really like that, how that's done. Mm-hmm. Um, so on the sides of a lot of these pages, there are little excerpts like <laughs> team coral of the Adeptus Astartes Raptor chapter, Xeno cultists on Kitsu seven more numerous than anticipated. They claim their rapture is coming soon. Their activity is increasing. All routes of egress from their tunnel layers are overrun. We are trapped. They attra- they attacked from above, soaring on leathery wings. So we went below. There it was worse. They were there, <laughs> sneaking, leaping, claws and talons. They coiled up in the smallest crevices, the tightest nooks. You could sweep a room for hours and be attacked as you turned your back to leave. Oh man, that is that is terrifying. Being on a planet that is being overrun by Tyranids is just like, oh boy, that is one of the worst nightmares in 40k because you are. If there is a hive fleet surrounding your planet, you essentially have no chance. There's no way you're going to fight off all those bugs. You're just <laughs> consigned to being part of the meal. And it's like, <laughs> good luck. There is an excellent, excellent piece of artwork in this book that I think is so baller. Um, not only oh. is it super cool, I love seeing the guardsmen on the bottom right holding their mouths. Oh, like, don't, wow. don't breathe, don't breathe. You look at this monster <laughs> above my head. He, they're eventually going to see you, pal. But yeah, just, and I and I love the lighting that just puts him in that, like, eerie red light where it's like, you know he's screwed. And it just really focuses on the terror, and it's just, oh, that's, that's great. And obviously, the bugs look phenomenal. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Oh, they look so good. Oh, yeah. With this happening and the slow advance of the Tyranid force, voices come from the darkness, specifically in this case uh, from a special ship known as the Pinion. The Pinion arrives very close to Holy Terra and its area around it. And as as every single gun points at it in orbital space, it pr- broadcasts its ident, clo- uh, ident codes that have such. This is the funniest thing I've read all day. Okay. That have such high clearance, such insane levels of clearance. They that that those who had to process them were immediately lobotomized and classified as servitors. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> wow. Okay. So just receiving the message gets you lobotomized. Okay, cool. Because it's just the, such high level. It's such high level that all the people who who managed it were were servitorized. It's so funny. <laughs> that's that's um, wild. But what this was was a ship with three eyes of the emperor. Do you remember who those are? Mm, no, I do not. They are the custodians who have gotten a little slow. And went off to serve the Imperium in their own hidden ways. Oh, okay. Do, gotcha. Do you, do you remember that? Well, I, I vaguely remember talking about that. Like, the, I don't remember everything that they do, but I remember about their existence and the fact that they still want to help the uh, the Imperium and that they're not quite, you know. Right, they, okay. They still right. want to help out, even though... They're maybe not the best of the best custodians anymore after, like, thousands and thousands of years of service or whatever. Yeah, they're like a millisecond too slow, and it's like, all right, time to put the yep. coat on. Yep. <laughs> so they moved forward bearing the message of the astropath from the Arbides guy, uh, the Arbides ship, as they had received it and had came back to seek counsel with Trajan Valoris and the High Lords of Terra – to state the incoming imminent threat. All right. And 
what's going on and what they found out is that the High Fleet Leviathan has arrived in two specific ways. Two enormous tendrils have entered from two part parts of the actual galaxy from the above and the below. Yikes. So we have a very, we have a, a generally flat galactic plane due to the uh, way the gravitational pull works with the Milky Way and the spiral galaxy we have. Mm-hmm. Um, so they have gone underneath the galactic plane and also above at the same oh, time and are yeah. sending both their tendrils down upon us in two types of, uh, of fleets known as um, Nautilon and Prometh- uh, Promethor. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I re- I remember the uh, the picture of the 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 tendrils actually going up into the 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 galaxy. Right? That's freaky. So you so we're getting we're getting two prong attack from above and below at them at the moment. We're getting cinched in. Mm-hmm. And Ooh. also, not only are you being cinched in, but you're actually uh, uh you, well, you're realizing that the Tyranids planned this. They chose to come from the top and the bottom with these two tendrils level of Leviathan. Oh, that sucks. So yeah, the yeah. yeah, so so they're realizing, uh oh, the Tyranids aren't just stupid bugs. They're they have like higher levels of intelligence, and that hive mind do be thinking though. It do be thinking. It do be thinking though. Also, oh man, like, are these actual, like, tendrils, or are these just swarms of Tyranids that look like tendrils? Um, so it is swarms of Tyranids that look like tendrils. Okay, because I was gonna say, if those are actual tendrils, what the fuck are they attached to? You're right. No, the, the, it's more of, like, you could argue it's like a fleet. Yeah, gotcha. So, with this information, Trajan Valoris and uh, the High Lords, particularly Lord Solar Leontis, who is kind of our main boy in this chapter, uh, have taken to the defense of the Soul System. Um, good Lord Solar, I, I must admit, Leontis is shown to be quite the man in this book, uh, <laughs> or in, the, in this little chapter. He being the high commander of all Astra Militarum forces in the Cementum Solar, his insane rank, his his martial intellect, his tacticians, you know, he is ready to kind of make a name for himself even more so because the last time there was a major Terra defense, uh, a bunch of corn demons arrived and he wasn't there to stop it. Um, so he's kind of like, all right, he's like, oh, I'm gonna make up for that and more now. Pretty much, he gotcha. uh, he reminds me a bit of Jace from Arcane. Um, way oh. more intelligent than Jace, uh, cause Jace is kind of a numb, numb skull sometimes. Um, <laughs> but bit. for the example, you know, he's on the, he's on the major council and he's going around organizing this special type of task force called the soul blades. Soul is an S O L like, you know, the sum. Yeah. The soul um, blades. I like it. The, they're about two to three ships sized, uh, strike forces, because Tyranids, while being pretty insane in lots of ways, uh, they are slow. You're th- basically, yeah. if I had to describe the Tyranids, it's that you have a house at the end of a block. And on the other side of the block, there is a tank. And the tank is moving at, at one-tenth of a mile of an hour. <laughs> yeah. And it's going to hit your house. And it's going to crumble your whole house, yeah. but it's going so slow. Yeah, it's going slow, but it will literally run through that house like a hot knife through butter. No resistance, but very, very slow. So you've got time to run. You can outrun it. You can outpace it. Mm-hmm. And you've got time to try and, and deal with it. So what he's doing is he's organizing these tiny little strike forces to go boop, 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 boop. And, you know, like, kind of, like, try to, you know, try to take some chunks off that tank. Try to sure. try to screw with the wheels. Try to do whatever you can. Mm-hmm. Anything to further slow it down or just put a little uh, nicks in the armor. So, with uh, Leontis's enormous retinue of strategos, priests, adepts, and aides, he was everywhere. He was, he, and then he bargained, threatened, or charmed 
his way oh. through all of the High Lords of Terra and the various people to get what he needed for his Soul Blades. Oh, so our boy Solar has a little bit of the old Riz, huh? Uh, you, you know, considering how he looks, yeah, the dude's like the picture-perfect perfect like gruff soldier man he's a good looking guy okay all right hey good for him he's doing what he's got to do for the preservation of the imperium for the preservation of mankind good for him so uh he made his way out and got his soul blades prepped and ready we're talking all kinds of things uh chapter master cave and shrike of the raven guard You've got Inquisitors oh, going around. Yep, your boy. You got uh, skills of Death Watch, Militarm, Tempestus Scions, High Nobles of Night Houses, Canonesses of Adeptus Sororitas, etc., and Set, etc. All moving out as these major strike forces. Even Captain General Trajan Valoris and his custodians sent out to do the harassment in, in, as well. Whew, you know it's serious if you're sending out custodians, especially like Trajan, too. Like, that's a. And it is a justifiably good reason to send custodians to, because that's a lot of nits. And uh, we have more transmissions. If anyone can hear this, if anyone receives this message, know that we did all we could. We fought to the last soldier, the last last pack, and our faith in the God Emperor never wavered. They are breaking in, and we will fight them one last time. Commend our souls to the master of. Oh, wow. And I like this one right here. Swear to you, I know what I damn well saw. Xenos aboard flying vessels, snatching up Tyranids and barb nets as though they were game. That's. Ooh. I like how, no matter what, whatever happens, the Drukari will always find their, their stupid <laughs> animals. Of course, of course, of course. Um, God, but yes. The Tyrannic War has, yeah. The fourth tyrannic war has begun. Oh, boy. And into the Maw we begin. Lord Solar Leontis has decided his best plan is to create an anchor of various worlds. The main one to surround a specific planet known as Sanctum. Okay. And Sanctum is where the main uh, battle force will begin. Everything around there. Who will anchor the worlds down? Forge worlds, triple your production. Um, you know, Militarum people get in there, train them, new soldiers. Just give a las gun to that fourteen year old kid. We we gotta go. Yeah, you gotta uh, go, and you gotta go in mass numbers because it's the Tyranids. Like, there's a lot of them coming in. So yeah, yeah, you got production. You got all, all hands on deck. Yeah, production stores, everything that can be moving. Uh, I mean, Leontis is a, a heavily impressive leader. This guy is going to night houses and and like speaking to them plainly, bargaining, talk like and you know what what do you guys want? I will make it happen. We need you. There's yeah. there's no none, no kind of I mean you know no hate to Gilliman. Gilliman is a Primarch for God's sake, but I mean, he Gilliman seems okay. like he de- yeah he, it's, Gilliman seems like he demands. <laughs> Oh yeah, as yeah, opposed sure. to as opposed to sways. Yeah, a, a, a Primarch would probably never bargain with anyone in the Imperium because they're a Primarch, and who's gonna say no to a Primarch? Um, better, better yet, I don't think Gilliman has time to bargain. I think Gilliman's mm-hmm. like like so. Abaddon broke the the universe in half. Um, <laughs> Uh, we need help. Go, go, go. As opposed to Leontis trying to take a more of a deaf touch, a bit more, uh, you know, throw that sh- throw that riz out there. And and honestly, you might as well barter anything you have because if you don't like, if the knights don't show up and you lose, everything's toast anyway. So like, sure, give them whatever they want. If they want like a ton of money or they want you know more status, sure, give it to them. You, you, we need you. Like, if we don't get you, all that stuff I didn't give you doesn't matter because it's all going to get eaten. Uh, Emperor save us, parentheses, with Riz. With Riz, indeed. Also, what is Gilliman doing at the moment? I think he's dealing with the Indominus Crusade and the other chaos issues. Uh, okay. So he literally can't help uh, with this fourth Tyrannic War. 90% of the time when the Tyranids arrive, you have a time issue. Because by the time you realize they're there, you're already, already you, they've already late. gotten to some critical mass. Yeah, 
It's yeah. it's like you just woke up one day and you look outside and then you see the tank and you're like, what? <laughs> it's already like on your doorstep. It's like, no, how did I not see this? I so, wasn't prepared. A ton of the worlds in this area were under all kinds of restrictions and jurisdictions. Uh, as the, you know, it was bunker down, build your trenches, pray to the god emperor and, and hold out sometimes. Evac- some people evacuated. Some, they, they went in all kinds of crazy craziness. There is one, though, well, for a while, it seemed like they were doing pretty good holding off these two swarms, uh, you know, keeping the strong worlds uh, contained. But much like most Imperium issues, it always gets worse. Of and there became... It's 40K. Of course it got worse. And two Tyranid swarms is not bad enough. Let's add a third. So oh, no. <laughs> we now get Hive, uh, Hive Tendril Grendelis arriving from a totally brand new side of the campaign as a pincer move with the other two. And then immediately bucking a giant hole in all of Leontis's plans. Oh now, boy, that is unfortunate timing. Oh. Now Leontis himself is a smart guy and planned for this, so he created oh. something called the Sanctuary Protocol, which is basically everyone hunker down, armor up, set, evacuate if you can, and if you can't, Godspeed for the Emperor. Kill as many <laughs> as you can before you die. Yeah. Keeping uh, make sure you for another 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 hive to show up. Yeah, he's a good tactician. Oh wow, yes, very smart. Good for him. This obviously with the arrival of the new tendril immediately caused mass hysteria to the worlds that were in its path, not just with the shadow and the warp, but also with just the level of of power of another Tyranid fleet arriving. Yeah. Um I won't lie, there is a part here that is really funny. Um, G dubs, G dubs is, uh, is, uh, <laughs> being a little cheeky here. Okay. A little cheeky breaky. All right. On a, uh, on a, a specific world in a uh, called Gallowspire in the Gallowspire system, there was high fratter, uh, Nihilus, N- N- Nihilus, I forget, uh, said that speaking of the Grendelus tendril was considered heresy. And to prepare for its arrival would be ridiculous because the God Emperor would never allow Xenos on our planet. What? What? <laughs> what? I, if you really, it, if you think that that the God Emperor would ever uh, harm you in such a way, you are speaking heretical, and we will not allow it. What? Is this so, escalated I, tensions incredibly rapidly. And would become to be known as the War of Closed Eyes as the entire planet <laughs> fell under civil war over those who deemed the alien invasion a heretical conspiracy and those who were like, no, it's not. Oh, my God. That's so America. Oh, my God. Like, I – oh, that's mm-hmm. – I love that it's called the War of Closed Eyes, too, because they just don't want to – they don't want to see it. They don't want to imagine it. Oh, of course the Emperor won't let the Tyranids eat us because he never lets the Tyranids eat anybody, right? Uh, we're fine. Oh, that's so stupid. Um, the Once the <laughs> Grendel or uh, Grendelin or whatever it's called, a uh, Grendelis Hive Fleet uh, arrived – or Hive Tendril mm. – um, the spores started to get launched onto the planet, and even as the spores were landing, the priesthood still declared it a heretical statement and no died. Way. And the <laughs> and the planet died the fastest out of all in the system. Oh man! Yeah. I mean, as the did. Militarum defenders were firing at oh the spores, God. they were like, "It's heresy! Don't talk about it." <laughs> It's, it's heresy. Stop shooting those bugs. That's heresy. The emperor will take it. That's, oh boy, that's, that is, that is hilarious, but also, oof. I love when GW plays into their satire that, uh, that they, that they have sometimes. Like sometimes they yeah. still could find a good way to throw it in there. Mm-hmm. Although it sounds like even if they didn't think it was heretical, that planet was going to fall anyway. Like, yeah, but know. they fell <laughs> quick. Yeah, I mean, at least at least this way, it's amusing. It's a funny story to tell as they get. So a couple other things happening. This whole place is totally under siege. 
Um, there's an area called the Accursed Paradise, which had all kinds of <laughs> fancy world uh, fauna, much like Catechim. And the Tyranids mm-hmm. arrived on it, and all the fauna started killing them. <laughs> and so they got slowed down pretty heavily over there. Um, in the Frozen Tears section of this area, there were established a large amount of mining facilities uh, for the League of Votan guilds in this massive um, asteroid belt mm-hmm. in which they eventually had to start fighting off the Tyranids and the Votan even allowed uh, humans to join their fight under the fact uh, that the humans were pissed off that the Imperium abandoned them uh, <laughs> from the uh, from the Nids. So kin and the, the, the clone, the clones and the kin were like, yeah, fine, whatever. I guess this works, yeah. I mean, when you're fighting the Tyranids, you you need all the help you can get, so. Even a uh, a special planet that was deemed completely off-limits to enter by the Imperium centuries ago was uh, then reintroduced on why it's off-limits as the Tyranids landed on that and enormous phalanxes of green metal men came out of the ground and started what? to gun them down as the, oh, Necrons. Oh, okay. So they landed on a tomb world. Yep. And then after that, an Eldar webway gate opened and the Eldari started fighting with the Krons, the humans, and the Nids in a four-way war. Oh my god, Eldar. Why? (laughs) Go home, Eldar. We don't need you here. Things are screwed up enough as it is. Look around. Get out of here. More and more, the Tyranids arrive and and sink their teeth into the fleshy underbelly of the Imperium and all those around them. Drukhari catching game, uh, guild masters of the Leagues of Votan moving their supply and mining of rocks, the Necron Tomb Worlds and Eldar Pleasure or Eldar Paradise Worlds, all one after the other after the other. Yeah, you're right. This this is like the Super Smash Brothers of 40k. Everyone's here. Everyone's, Everyone's here. fighting. Like God, I. Yeah, you, you were right. I I thought it was just because the Leviathan box had Ultramarines and Tyranids that that was the main thing. But no, it's literally everyone. Shh. Sheesh. Sheesh. Uh, there's a little excerpt of some chaos or some Space Marine Terminators fighting off some Nids. Uh, they're, they're, it's basically showing off the one in the box. Yeah, that's the picture of Shia's right there. Ooh, um, it was rather nice picture, actually. It was rather interesting because uh, one of their Gravis apothecaries had taken some fancy pantsy Tyranid like hive gland, and the Tyranids were trying to kill him very badly. They were oh. swarming them with tons and tons of bugs, but a lot of the bugs were sometimes even running past the other Terminators to try to get to the apothecary with the gland. With the gland? So yeah. there's something going on about that. Okay, so they haven't said what's up with the gland, just that the Tyranids really don't want the Humies to have it and or if they break it, something bad happens. Yeah, it says, our acquisition of the Node B cerebral core certainly seems to have agitated them. I find myself <laughs> the unwilling focus of their attention. It's like, such monomania leaves the foe vulnerable, brother. Ah, find gratifying that. Unjustifiably in a position that I'd rather not, rather be, not in. be in. Let me point at you, present the queen. Um, is it gratifying that my heightened peril provides a tactical advantage, First Captain. Um, <laughs> also, but they, they I, have I, been love, sh- I love that picture of uh, the Ultramarines fighting off the Tyranids because they are literally all sides. It's Tyranids. It's tentacles. It's bugs. Like you can barely see the light from the sky shining through all those bugs. Like that is the most Tyranid picture I've ever seen. The Ultramarine uh, Terminators actually do look pretty good, too. I won't lie. Yeah, they do. So, finally, it's time for the big chunk. The Tyranids have found their way to push past the defenders of the system and made their way to Sanctum itself. Uh, There is a fleet war going on in the sky. Even the Imperial Fist Phalanx is here. 
with uh, Tor Garadon and a retinue of Imper- 300 Imperial Fists, actually, all there to assist Lord Solar. Um, but the Tyranids, in their hyper cunning, and well, the hive mind has deemed it fit to respawn the, sp- the Swarm Lord for this fight. Oh, um, let's go. So Swarmy is back, or, or as they called it, uh, a enormous beast with four bone swords, which we know who that is. Uh, that's the swarm. Um, I love the swarm lord. Let's go. And their tactical retinue has deemed it fit to slowly encroach upon Sanctum until every side has been surrounded and then launch their attack. Because even the Nids are smart sometimes. Uh, yep. They're, they're going to completely surround them and then everybody just converge and... Ooh, that's a scary thought with Nids just being like, I'm just imagining like this giant bubble of Nids around them just kind of converging like the atmosphere of bugs and just uh, slowly vice gripping a planet. That's scary. I don't like that. So so it started off with something known as the Dorn Wall. The Dorn Wall is an asteroid belt and field surrounding Sanctum that they've uh, stationed an enormous amount of listening posts, orbital batteries, and various other things in the asteroids to slow the NIDS advance. Mm -hmm. Um, For most of the time, those fortifications were very evidently not going to stop the Tyranids' advance, and so were mainly meant to be entirely filled up with uh, with the kinds of people who would be okay with death. Um, Penitents, (laughs) penal troops, servitors and those who swore themselves to a martyr's death for this claustrophobic kind of redemptionist fight. Yeah. Um, if you their die, guns, then you will be redeemed by the emperor. Yeah. 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 Uh, their guns fired until all ammunition ran dry. The, the asteroids were thrown into the Tyranids, really trying to slow the advance, despite the fact that sometimes some of the Tyranid ships just, Oh, I don't know. Ate the rock because <laughs> why not? <laughs> I mean, sure, it's it's biomass, technically. I mean, sure, why not? You know, if you, sometime, if you eat a planet, why not eat an asteroid? Sometimes little Nid ships would, like, send giant tendrils just spiking through the asteroid. <laughs> sometimes they would fill it up with toxicrines and venom thropes to have spores choke the survivors inside if they didn't get already hit by explosive decompression. Oh. Some just ate the rock. God, God damn, Shy! That is a horrifying picture. Oh my God, is that one of their bio ships? I'm assuming it is, right? Because oh my, God. is that- see all the little uh, little gargoyles swimming around it that look like little uh, that look like flies. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, that that is that like a is that is that a little alien inspiration with a little uh, with a little face <laughs> mouth and mouth mouth and mouth. mouth, and mouth? With no eyes, perhaps, perhaps. Yep, yep. <clears throat> there's a lot of alien inspiration there. Sure. Well, there's a lot of <clears throat> inspiration taken for every faction, but that's neither here nor there. But uh, for Sanctum, uh, Lord Solar Leontis prepped himself and realized something very important, the matter of morale. And so for a large, oh. once the actual Tyranids fully arrived, the shadow in the warp was pretty heavy really pushing the mental strain of the defenders of Sanctum. However, he had specifically, personally, filmed, like, inspirational videos for <laughs> the various groups. Like, he himself was was out there like, hey, guys, this video is sponsored by Manscaped. I was going to say, so Solar's a, Solar's a content creator, huh? He's an influencer. He is a he is a full on he's, he's he is influen- influencer. He is influencing them to be powerful. He's influencing their morale. He's a 40k influencer. Good for yeah. him. He whether it's Ezekiel sermons or just a guardsman to a guardsman heart. You know, really just making sure he keep the hope up. Now, Commissar Bolt pistols barked a few times, but you know, it's cool. <laughs> it's cool. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah, I, I um, imagine there probably would be a few times where a commissar would have to be like, "Are you running?" Yeah, because this is this almost this has to feel like an unwinnable situation for like just a lowly guardsman. Like they have to feel so like, "Oh my god, I'm dying! Get me out of here! I have to survive!" And yeah, I I thoroughly like that. After this, he was on the battlements of the high spire 
of that they were uh, fighting on. And even even as ungodly amounts of Tyranid bioforms slammed into the void shields covering the spire on the top of the of the snow covered mountains of Sanctum, he rode on his steed from battlement to battlement, from defender to defender, aircraft gun to aircraft gun, giving exactly what they needed, a rousing speech, determination, ecclesiarchal sermons, prayers to the Omnissiah, whatever they needed to keep spirits up. He and his like 300 bodyguards, tech priests, scribes, and adepts that followed him on his steed went to the common man and roused them up. Wow. An actually good leader in 40K? What? What? That's the heresy. Like, jeez. He's the okay, he's he the working. Like he sounds like a he, good, yeah. good leader. He's a he's a good man. He's the, he's the working man's uh, leader. He is a he is like he's a guardsman at heart, and he knows what it's like. He knows how to give them what they what they need. Yeah, and I imagine um, they fight hard for him because why wouldn't we? You know, he's also a good you're, leader. You're he cares you're next, about us. Yeah, I mean, you're next to the Lord Solar. Yeah. Like he's a he's a high lord of Terra, and he's coming to talk and influence and keep the morale up of us guardsmen. What? Like I can't imagine how it must feel to be a lowly guardsman, seeing the sky. Oh, oh yeah, I should I should remind this. Um, the Tyranid's fleet was so thick it could be seen from the ground. Ooh. Like if you're on the planet, you could look up and you can see the Tyranids moving. In the sky, I thought you were gonna say they just straight up like uh, three hundred blot out, blotted out the sun, and just like it was perpetual night because there were so many nids, sunlight couldn't get through. Oh, uh, there's a little bit of that for parts of it, yeah. Um, <laughs> but also, but it's like you know, you look up and you see the moon, and then like right next to it, you see the writhing mass of a moon, except fifty times larger, and it's not a moon; it's just bug. Oh, that yeah, that's got to be very demoralizing. Oh, God. And, but then after that, Mr. Lord Solar Leontis walks up to you and shakes your f- hand <laughs> and is like, you've goddamn got this. Just keep doing your part, guys. Wow. God damn it. I hear he signed a contract with kick. No, please don't <laughs> let him go there. <laughs> That's a bad place. <laughs> they gave him a hundred million dollars to do his sermons on kick. <laughs> Bro, imagine getting paid a hundred million dollars and you're not even exclusive. I can't. You're giving LeBron uh, uh, his full salary to play on your team sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Every God now damn it. and then you play for us. Jeez. Uh, but anyway, with the <laughs> rousing speech and the defenders uh, su- doing a surprisingly good job at holding everything off, um, there arrived three new Tyranid bioforms. No These way. These are known as the Norn Emissaries. And they slowly, with a dancer's grace, slide their way through the various Tyranid uh, hordes, skulking and stalking. And I'm talking like the like these things look like they're going to have a new model. They're they're not a model in the game yet, but I think they're going to add it. Um, oh yeah, they're they're gigantic, oh, but they no. move lithe. One of them squished its mass down into an elevator shaft and climbed oh. up. Oh no, that no, that's the, uh, that's the Nero tyrant shy. Oh man. Um, Are we going to talk about them? Cause they look so cool. They're just giant, scary brain bugs that murder your mind. They kind of look like Genova from final fantasy seven. Sorry to be a dork, but they, they kind of do. I actually know. I get that reference actually. Yes. I didn't realize you played. I played the remake. Oh, 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 that's right. We've you had a conversation the original about this. One the re- yeah, okay, gotcha. Um, no, this is the image they have in the book about it. Whoa. Whoa. Wow, that is 
That is. Think a, about how big a custodian a is. Bug. Is that just a custodian, or is that a named one? That's Trajan Valoris. That's the the guy. I, I was gonna say if they've if they've got an unhelmeted custodian, it's got to be a pretty important one. And actually, I kind of forgot that Trajan was here. But yeah, <laughs> that's ooh, that's a big scary bug. So one of the Nort emissaries found its way to somehow fit itself in an elevator shaft, and it crawled up for hours upon hours and hours until it burst into the high sanctum and killed a whole lot of navigation and relay people. Oh, that's bad. It's, it specifically went for that. The other oh. Nord emissary snuck its way down into the gene seed vaults of oh, no. the uh, Astartes chapter there in which it fought like 10 dreadnoughts and killed most to all of them what? before before being brought down by the chapter master and its various groups uh, down below. Whoa, one of these things killed 10 dreadnoughts? A, a lot of dreadnoughts. It was a score of White Templars dreadnoughts, maybe like five or six. It's a, it's still a lot. <laughs> That's a ton. Just beating one dreadnought is kind of a feat, but what? Yep. It says here almost all of the ancient warriors were slain, and that's that's a heavy blow to the, to that lose was, yep. that many dreadnoughts. That is a serious. I mean, it's better than losing the gene seed, I guess. But oh, the um the the Norn emissary was known as the fiend of Hag Rift. Oh my god! So this these is, Norns uh, are not only smart; they are brutal in a fight this seems to be a new tyranid bioform that's not technically new from a lore perspective the way it's written it sounds like these things have been around um but the imperium has seen them no no it doesn't seem that way either it's written as if they've seen them before but for us as viewers as new people we have not you and i don't have never seen these things before okay um but they appear to be enormous bugs that are like a hybrid between a titan sized bug and like a, and like a, just a big bug, like a middle ground between the two of them that are shockingly lithe and incredibly intelligent. This is interesting. Sh- uh, you want to read what Shai says? Sure. Uh, also, Norn queens are the makers of Tyranids. Uh, they never take the battlefield, but they are basically living bioengineering chambers of Tyranids that design, adapt, and birth Tyranid bioforms. Every Tyranid that, exi- that exists is linked to Norn queens, so their emiss- emissaries are probably a big deal. Wow. Ah, so yes, these so. Are emissaries of the thing that literally makes every Tyranid. No wonder they're so like cunning, smart, and, and lithe, but also so, big. So these are essentially the Norns are to the Tyranids what the Custodians are to the Imperium. I I might even argue that they're, they're what, the, what the Primarchs are to the Imperium, Ooh, and the yeah, the, yeah, the Queens right. are like the Emperors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think that's the better one, especially with how uh, how hard these few Norns have gone. With mm-hmm. like killing dread, yeah, they might be more, yeah, closer to Primarchs. Oh, you, you, th- oh, so the third one uh, scaled the mountain, taking also hours to get up the mountain, and then contoured itself into a tiny little hole on the side of the mountain and waited. And then Lord Solar Leontis strode his way past the battlements. And the Norn's black eyes stayed fixed on him until the perfect time in which it sprung out and jumped flying in the air directly upon the Lord Solar. But before it could land on him, a streak of missiles from a golden gunship hits it in the side and launches it across where it immediately slams and kills like 50 of his bodyguards and, (laughs) um, and various aides and adepts. He well, uh I was, he I was worried for Solar for there a little bit, but good, 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 good. He was thrown off of his horse uh, and landed on the on the ground. Uh, and as the golden gunship f- jumps uh, flies off, a whole bunch of custodians are unlaunched or unleashed from the gunship and land onto the ground, including 
Captain General Trajan Valoris. That picture is what happens that next. That picture. Got you, got you, got you. The emissary immediately gets up, views the various custodians, and fixes eyes again on the Lord Solar, immediately jumping oh. to pounce on him again, but is then uh, forced off by a hail of bolt- bolter fire from the various axes and spears of the stodies. I was so going to say, imagine the gall to be surrounded by custodians and be like, nah, I'm going after solar. Damn. <laughs> he, well, it's interesting because this Norn Emissary looks at Captain General Trajan Valoris and the custodians yeah. and says, no, the more important target is this little guy here. Yeah. Which which is 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 not like it being stupid. It's it being probably smarter. Yeah, it's probably smart because it realizes that that's the higher priority target because he's the one that's like fortifying the defenses and keeping the morale up. And if they lose him, it's all over for their defenses. Well, when you think about it, it climbed that mountain and waited to pounce specifically, specifically. Yeah, that's on true. him. So it, it's it's this emissary knows that its priority target is something it hasn't even seen yet. Wow. The, it knows it's, it's the general. It's just so crazy to think about a Tyranid that has that level of planning and, like, foresight and thinking. Because, like, normally it's just, oh, it's a high fleet that's just going to overrun you, period. Do they need strategy? Not really, because they have just overwhelming numbers. And, like, to know that there are Tyranids that can plot and have higher level intelligence like that is like they needed the extra help, right? So interesting. The, uh, the Norn emissary then jumps and rips out all the, the people in the cockpit of the golden gunship, tearing it apart and sending it spiraling to the ground in which, uh, he then after attempting to go for, uh, Leontis, Leontis was bleeding badly from a scalp wound, uh, with blood running down his face. And I kind of like this when the, the emissary tried to jump on him. He kind of like reached for his blade, but he, he kind of fumbled it. Like he oh. really couldn't grab it because of his head wounds. Yeah, yeah. And it's just, I don't know. It's kind of cool to see him like screw up. Yeah, you he's know, not like he was thro- completely perfect, whatever. Yeah, like he's a normal guy, right? So him yeah. just kind of fumbling his blade is. I don't know. It kind of gives him a bit more character. It's so relatable. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> from here on out was the giant fight between the custodians and the emissary. Uh, the poor aides that were not fast enough to get out of the way were then shoulder checked by custodians as they ran through <laughs> them to attack the the attack the beast. Uh, as it was flying and smashing and snatching each other, uh, a lot of custodians died. Yeah, like, I mean, the way these emissaries sound, it does not shock me that a bunch of custodians are getting absolutely decked. I was impressed. It, one was grabbed with its arm ripped from its body and then thrown across. One had the tail coil around his neck and and, uh, and break it. One got kicked by the emissary in the head so hard, his head flew across the battlement <laughs> and his body just spurted blood before toppling over. Oh my like, god! These I, I think he, are no joke. God, it damn. killed like it killed like six, which is Whoa. insane for custodians. Six, it, yeah, in lore, six custodian kills is massive. Yeah, it, it, it tore them apart. This thing. Um, <laughs> damn, I'm These assuming are a that, problem. I'm assuming this thing is going to basically be like like running a Primark. In your in your army, like the oh, it, this it is the, the Nid Primarch, you know. Mm-hmm. It has um, like the the way these things are going, like just slicing through dreadnoughts and slicing through custodians. That's Primarch level, right? You these have got to be like these special ones where if you're a Nid player, you can run maybe one. So after this, even during its fight with custodians, even as it attacks the custodians. It still swings at Leontis. <laughs> of course, it still makes attacks. Target, yeah. 
But at this point, uh, one time it even uh, tried to just bite him in half. But this time he had regained his composure and was able to like to jump back far enough away to not get killed. Mm-hmm. Um, and Valoris then, at a very important moment, swung his axe and embedded itself in the side of its skull, smashing it to the ground. And as it fell, it crushed more of Leontis's aids. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> Which is always just really funny. It's just like little people getting, getting smashed on every so often. His poor um, bodyguards and aides are just kidding. <laughs> just but the away. remaining uh, custodians hacked away at it. And eventually, uh, with enough of it, enough smashes and enough cracks and, and crumbles, it did fall to the ground, spitting out i and blood, and then ceased moving. Oh, Sheesh. Man. Sheesh. Those are a problem. Those are a massive problem. I'm assuming there aren't a ton of Norns in existence because that would be just too much. But oh my god, I, mm. it's there. uh, it's pretty yeah. nasty. Yep, agreed. Um, I love them though. I I love that. I love that shit. But uh, after that, uh, the astropathic choirs call for aids and stuff. Um, the soul blades that were sent out all finally ended up returning to the system, slowing the Tyranid advance and buying a large amount of time for the defenders. The Imperial Fists, no, known quite well for their defense, uh, using yeah. their phalanx, pushed back upon the Nids. And for now... It appears that we have successfully defended Sanctum for a period of time, a decent wow. period of time to keep ourselves back for a little longer. And I, that's kind of where it ends. I am actually shocked that the defense was successful with how many Tyranids it sounded like were swarming this area. The fact that they eventually push them back is crazy. Like, I thought uh, it was going to end with, like, Solar having to just retreat and be like, well, we held them off a little bit, but that area is... T- uh. Well, remember, they, they are at, like, a stalemate now. Like, sure. they're holding, but it's not like they've pushed them back. They are holding. Yeah, but even just holding them off with the numbers the Nids have is kind of nuts. You know, I, I will say that it is kind of funny to think that kind of nuts is um, kind deep. of nuts is not all of them dying. <laughs> well, I mean, like you said, like there there was like what a moon sized battlement of Tyranids just looming. And you're telling me you're putting that in a stalemate. Well, yeah, they have a lot of guns. True, but also don't forget they have their. Don't forget they have their own moon. The phalanx is there. True enough, the phalanx does show up, and the phalanx is planet-sized, I suppose, isn't it? That's okay. Yeah, it's That's it's pretty big. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, That's it's, what she said. <laughs> what, <laughs> ow. One would argue that this is barely even an imperial victory. It's a stalemate <laughs> after they've lost how many worlds? Oh, uh, well, I guess that's true. Good guys, yeah. we did it. We held them off of a world. What, Sergeant, what about the other 70? <laughs> Shut up. We held them Don't up. worry about them. One of those idiot ecclesiarchy guys said that they were heresy. <laughs> yeah. Come. Uh, well, we only lost 70. Ah, it's fine. We've got 999,950 more to go. It's We're good. We stopped them. That's all that counts. I guess, I guess not really a victory, <laughs> is it, after all? Okay, you got me. However, it does end with an excerpt from Shadow Captain Garon. Shadow Captains are the names of the Raven Guard ones. Mm-hmm. Um, he went, he's, uh, a, a person went to him and said, I, it is best you see for yourself, Captain. I have not the words. The moment Garon stepped onto the bridge, he sensed the strategic equation altering about him. The flight and their part in it had changed. He felt it in the tense quiet, saw in the wide-eyed focus of bridge officers that failed to conceal the fear that they were suppressing. The Shadow Captain did not yet know what had occurred, but he suspected that by the time he did, he would be ordering Olg, it's like a, don't worry about it, awakened after all. The image was grainy, 
A deep void capture, direct from the acid-scorched prow of the pinion blade, Garon's post-human cerebrum swiftly accounted for static warping and image degradation. He identified Stangalade's distant star, several of its worlds, long overrun by rapacious Xenos, and the dark clouds against the star field that were the nearest enemy fleet swarms. He became very still as he registered something else, just off-center of the image, something that at first his mind had insisted on categorizing as a visual artifact or feed error. It was surely too large to be a Tyranid bio-vessel by an oh, almost no. absurd degree. Oh, yet, no. Yet there was no moon in that region of the void. Oh, no. Garon's eidetic memory assured him of that. He gazed at the colossal shape, and as he did so, he began to discern details and hints of squirming biological motion that disturbed him on even a primal level. Oh no. That is not that is not natural to this system, he said. Oh no. It is not, Shadow Captain, almost managing to keep the tremor from his voice, nor is it anything even our most advanced augurs can make sense of. The machine spirits are driven close to madness by the mere sight of it. That is a tyranny in nature. That is a tyranny in nature's beyond doubt, my lord. But the sheer scale of that thing. Oh, so no. the tyranids oh, have a Death Star. Yeah, the tyranids have a Death Star, and we and do we? We don't even know what it does. It's just this giant, looming, squirming Death Star mass of tyranid. It is a flesh planet. And it is going somewhere. Oh, no. I hate it. But I'm so curious, too. I want to know what this, like, fleshy, tyrannid planet biomass is and what it does. Oh, that's so gross, but so great. I love it. I I am literally imagining a gigantic ball of tentacles and mouths that just go and eat stuff. Uh, I'm literally imagining the Leviathan. Yeah, Tyranid Ball that has a giant mouth that literally eats it. Like, it goes Unicron and just the tendrils just open up and there's just fangs and claws and teeth in there. And, yuck. So uh, that's where our, we end. It what? is It is the, uh, it's, much, it's like the first book of the, it was about the same length of an Arcs of Omen book. It's, you know, it's the first one. Hmm. I mean, I uh, sounds pretty interesting. Sounds pretty dope, honestly. It, it sounds... I like it, and I want to know what happens next. So, man, GW's been doing good with these books lately. Mm-hmm. So the fourth Tyrannic War is here. Defense is beginning, and we've got problems. You know, big problems, especially with the, with the Norns involved, with the tentacle planet. Oof. It's a time, all right. I would not want to be in the Imperium right now. <laughs> Neither would I. Or ever, really, I suppose. Well, that's that. Yeah. Buy our new poster. Have fun. <laughs> it's a problem. And uh, we'll see you <laughs> next time to see how the f- we get out of this one. <laughs>